Who knows Ronald Reagan's 11th commandment? Thou shalt not speak ill of another Republican. Well, that may be hard to force out there in the heat of battle, but I will not tolerate any beating up of a fellow Republican in this room at the Republican Party event. So, this goes for the audience, not just for the candidate, it goes for the audience as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl DeMaio. And Congressman Duncan Hunter. Let's have, let's have a big round of applause for our candidates. You guys may sit down. Can we have, can we have our staff bring each, each of them a glass of water? So just we have some water up here. So let's see if we can get logistically done. Uh, we're can I get a straw in my glass? Extra straws. All right, here we go. And we're live on Facebook, so make sure you're, you're, you're sharing us. So we're, we're gonna start with- uh... It's October 14th, 141 days until the March primary. I'm crouched down on the carpet of a hotel ballroom, surrounded by Republicans. It's a scene that belies the notion that conservatism is dying in California. It's a safe space for Californians who think that the gas prices are too damn high. The Governor Gavin Newsom is a one-man wrecking ball, bent on destroying everything they hold sacred. It's a place where Californians can wave their Trump flags high and mock the state's plastic straw ban. It's the Republican Party of San Diego County's monthly meeting. On the agenda, the 50th. Prevailing wisdom says that in any normal race, this party backs the incumbent. But this isn't a normal incumbent, and this isn't a normal race. Remember, we've gone back in time here, back to a time when Congressman Duncan Hunter was still vigorously fighting back against a federal indictment that claimed he and his wife used a quarter million dollars in campaign funds for personal expenses. He was facing these charges when he received this group's endorsement two years ago. But now, with his legal problems hanging over the race, three prominent Republicans are offering themselves up as replacements to the embattled congressman. Tonight, they're all on the same stage for the first time as candidates. Okay. How are you? Yeah, so just tell me who you are and what we're doing here today. Tony Kavari, chairman of the Republican Party of San Diego County. Tonight is our... Uh, Monthly meeting. We have 1,200 people coming to hear a, um, a forum on the 50th Congressional District. Candidates are all going to be here. Then afterwards, the committee is going to uh, go into closed session, and we'll have some votes on uh, whether to endorse in this race and a couple of other races. So a lot of energy here, a lot of support for our president, and a lot of excitement. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the I am your congressman, and this is great to see so much interest in East County for the first time ever. Because where most of these guys are from, they don't know where East County is. They don't know where East North County is. Here's the reality. Out of 53 congressional seats in California, we have seven of them. The Republican Party has seven. Even when Democrat operatives in the U.S. Attorney's Office indicted me months before my election, trying to steal my seat, I still won. It means something when I say that I'm going to get things done. And, and I'm not going to move somewhere and fight for the easy seat. I'm not going to go somewhere and, and try to find things that are the easy way out. As a United States Marine, what we do is we stand up and we fight. And we fight. So that's it. I'm going to stand by Trump. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. And I'm going to stay in my district and fight and fight and fight. Thank you. A little, little reminder. Let's keep it. Let's keep it uh, 
let's keep it on our, on our own positives. Uh, next question, what makes you different uh, as a candidate? And positives, please. Uh, Congressman Issa, what makes you different as a candidate? One thing that makes me different, of course, is that I've done this. As a matter of fact, I've represented a third of the congressional district, the 50th congressional district, longer than my colleague has. If Duncan Hunter is able to, quite frankly, survive what he's facing, we can have a whole different discussion. But if not, you need a conservative on day one that will do the job in this district, a district that I live closer to most of the district than these two gentlemen, and, and much closer even than Duncan. It's not about proximity. This is a national program, and I'm a national leader. <laughs> Senator Jones, what makes you different? Well, my, my first point was, I, I, I don't know how much closer you can get to the district than living in the district. I am you. I am the grassroots. I will actually not just hit the button. I will go out. I will organize. I will stand in front of the store with you in the hot, hot summer sun. Now, I passed out some literature. I don't think it's a violation of, the, of any 11th commandment. Carl DeMaio is a never-Trumper and has basically been quoted saying it. Now, that's okay. I'll take that one. The fact is, the fact is, you can't say the things when it's convenient about being with somebody. First and foremost, Nancy Pelosi is Speaker of the House. I'm sorry, correction. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is Speaker of the House because we had 39 Republicans who cut and run rather than stood and fought. All right. Before we continue on, before we continue on, I want to make sure to, to uh, ask our, our, our candidates to respect the 11th commandment. Can we, can we do that, guys, please? I've done this job, and if I'm honored to uh, win in, on March 3rd, I'll do it and do it well. But if the delegates tonight endorse any one of us, they endorse, endorse against three of us. If the party doesn't endorse, Ultimately, one of us will win in March, and that will be the outcome that the voters chose. Thank you. Let's have a big round of applause for our candidates, and let's make sure we're going to support whoever makes the runoff on March in March. Thank you very much. Thank you to the candidates. And thank you for being the man of the arena. As candidates shuffled in and out of the closed session vote, making their final pleas for an endorsement, I couldn't help but wonder, what would Reagan think? The Republicans had brought their street fight into the holy house of the GOP. And in Congressman Ice's closing statement, he suggested that the committee make no endorsement. While the three other candidates took to the stage to say, support me, Issa had a different message. Stay out of this. Don't get caught in the crossfire. I hung around in the lobby with a few other UT reporters, waiting to hear the committee's verdict. So, the result is that there is no endorsement. Well, what's next? Is there going to be another vote? Or, 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 are we going to... No, this is, we're done. Okay. For this, for the 50th question, this, we're going to vote on Supervisor next, and we're going to vote on San Diego City Council District 5, and then the 76th Assembly District. Okay. For the 50th Congressional District, this committee did not find in favor of two-thirds of any one candidate, so no endorsement. Okay. And they're going to continue the race as is without an endorsement? Yeah. You can't tell me if there was more on one no. side? No. No. What do you... What do you good I question. Good try this. No, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, quite right. No, no, the, 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 the voting is, is in closed session, so only the results is reported out. We don't have it. Up next, on the 50th. Congressman, are you planning to resign? Good morning, guys. Are you planning to resign, sir? Are you planning on resigning? Are you stepping down? It's pretty weird. It's not something that happens in most careers as reporters and 
certainly never happened in my career.